embattled Congressman Matt Gates. Matt Gates was one of the very few members in the entire Congress who bothered to stand up against permanent Washington on behalf of his constituents. Matt Gates right now, he's a problem for the Democratic Party, and he can cause a lot of hiccups in passing the laws. So we're going to keep running those stories to keep yeah. hurting him. If you stand for the flag and kneel in prayer, if you want to build America up and not burn her to the ground, then welcome, my fellow patriots. You are in the right place. This is the movement for you. You ever watch this guy on television? It's like a machine. Matt Gates. I'm a canceled man in some corners of the internet. Many days I'm a marked man in Congress, a wanted man by the deep state. They aren't really coming for me. They're coming for you. I'm just in the way. If, ra if critical race theory means making children in school fixate on race, I'm not for that. If it makes, if it's about collective guilt, I didn't do anything to your great, great, great grandfather. I don't want to be responsible for that. If it's about, you know, a toxicity of just from being born white, uh, if it's about dividing everybody into oppressor and oppressive, oppressed and oppressor, I'm not for that. So there are things that are being taught and are going around that I'm not for, that if that was critical race theory, I wouldn't be for. Welcome to Firebrand. I'm Congressman Matt Gates, and our lead topic today, critical race theory. Is America a nation that believes in racial integration or not? Are we a country united in common destiny, or is our destiny defined by race, for better or worse? Should national policy aspire to be colorblind, fair to everyone, regardless of race? Or must we view every policy decision through the lens of color and kind? Should military service members view themselves and their fellow patriots differently based on skin color? Or should we have one united fighting force? Be all you can be, after all. Should schools teach children that whiteness is evil or ignorant? Is capitalism an engine of upward mobility or a manifestation of white supremacy? Should voting be based on the will of the people? Or is democracy less important than racial quotas? Are we still a nation that has a dream? Critical race theory is an explicitly racist ideology. It's anti-white, it's anti-black, and it's really anti-Asian too, actually. It answers the questions I've asked in direct contradiction to the values of most Americans and the organizing principles of our great nation. And critical race theory is everywhere. Our military, our education system, corporate America, virtually every aspect of our government, all pushed endlessly by the true enemy of the people, the America last press. It will destroy our country if we do not diagnose it, recognize its manifestations, and vanquish it from our nation. Dr. Malvo is a critical race theorist who recently testified before the House Judiciary Committee to support financial reparations to descendants of slaves. Yes, your current Congress is actually voting some, on something as divisive as racial reparations. The explicit bigotry of her argument was on full display. I'm not kumbaya. So I don't like to think Thank that white you. people are evil. I think white people are ignorant. Oh, we're just ignorant. What an idiot. We'll expose the radical ideological core of critical race theory. I've got results of our investigation into how CRT is being backed by powerful forces in big media, big government, and big tech. You'll see the legislation in Washington and throughout America that is the antidote to this sickness. And if you need marching orders, we'll have information about how parents, patriots, tiger moms are all joining together for empowerment and action to defeat critical race theory. One way the woke media tries to cover for CRT is to say its opponents are simply misinformed. We don't understand. Do these vocal opponents of critical race theory actually understand fully what it is? No. The Republicans invoking it as a cudgel uh, don't seem to actually understand what it is about. First of all, most people who talk about critical race theory don't actually know what it is. And so it's so it's they've begun to demonize it in a way that they have 
you know, whitewash the public's mind in the way that they've whitewashed our history. And there have been several reports, and I've run into this as well, about legislators not really being able to define what critical race theory is. And I would say that I doubt that uh, Rick DeSantis or most Republicans actually know what critical race theory is. His name is Ron DeSantis, governor of the third largest state. At least we know that. We also know a lot about critical race theory, actually. And I'm going to take you through the scholarship and the frightening adoption in our own government. It's freaking wild. So let's endeavor to learn what CRT means from lead CRT authors. Critical race theory frontman Ibram Kendi wrote How to Be Anti-Racist, but his definitions are hardly illuminating. Take a listen. And I define an anti-racist as, as, as someone who is expressing an anti-racist idea or, or supporting an anti-racist policy. So to be anti-racist, all you have to do is be anti-racist. Sounds easy, right? No. If you deny that you're racist, that in fact makes you a racist. Fundamentally, racism, its heartbeat, has always been denied. And, and the sound of that heartbeat has always been, I'm not racist. To be, put, be more specific, the sound of that heartbeat has always been not racist. By this standard, behold, America's racist president. Corey should apologize. He knows better. There's not a racist bone in my body. I've been involved in civil rights my whole career, period. Joe Biden has the boomer, period. But what does this all mean, question mark? If you say you aren't a racist, you are a racist. And the only way to be anti-racist is to admit that you are, in fact, racist. And that is the distinction between a racist and an anti-racist. A racist, no matter what is said about them, no matter how they're charged with being racist, they're always going to deny it. While an anti-racist, will take these definitions of a racist idea, of a racist policy, and of a racist, and apply their behavior to it. And say, you know what? I was being a racist. Ironically, Americans who self-identify as not racist, whether they're conservatives, moderates, liberals, radicals, progressives, they don't realize, I think many of us don't realize, that we are connecting ourselves to a history of, of, of slave traders. It's decided. The more not racist you feel, the closer to a slave trader you become. Bad news for the big guy. I mean, the one thing you cannot say about Joe is that he's a racist. The prosecutors of the Salem witch trials would be proud. After all, only witches deny being witches. Throw her in the lake and tie her feet together. If she survives, she's obviously a witch. If she ends up dead at the bottom of the lake, we will acknowledge her innocence. Don't trust anyone who tells you that only the innocent plead guilty and only the guilty plead innocent. Sometimes innocent people just act innocent. The best way to understand critical race theory is as a criticism and rejection of the two main goals of the civil rights movement, mainly racial integration and colorblind public policy. Dr. King believed that all people of all races should live together and that public policy shouldn't treat different races differently. Because I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. When critical race theorists are not making Dr. King's dream more difficult to achieve with their demonization of white people, they're critiquing Dr. King himself directly, asserting their deep dissatisfaction with the civil rights discourse. Critical race theory doesn't call for an integrated, colorblind America imagined by Dr. King. It tantalizes the worst impulses within us, ethno-nationalism, otherizing our fellow Americans who don't look like us, dangerous division of the races in our great country. It hearkens to a darker time indeed. Separate is not equal, nor preferable, nor American. Critical race theorist Gary Peeler reduces these divisive ideas to writing. 
Whatever the intentions of black and white integrationists, it should now be apparent that the exclusion of a nationalist approach to racial justice has been a cultural and political mistake. Racial nationalism is not a cure for racism. It is a recipe for more racism and probably more violence harmful to America. Critical race theorists aren't the intellectual successors to Dr. King. They embody the most separatist, harmful ideals of Malcolm X. Dr. King wanted us to be colorblind. The CRT gang would separate us based on race. How we treat each other, how the government treats all of us would be based exclusively on race. And if you aren't the preferred race, look out, hold on, buckle up. It doesn't end well for you or your children. As critical race theorist John O'Callamar warns, the voices that matter in a CRT world are distinctively non-white. CRT is explicitly non-white. Ethno-nationalism, black nationalism. This is sadly the CRT objective, and they're willing to instantly label you a racist if you don't self-execute the smear for them. E pluribus unum, out of many one. They refuse our vision to make America one nation under God, instead choosing a land of endless grievances. In practice, see the heartbreaking impact on high school student Brad Taylor. I'll take you back to my first day at RHS this fall. The principal came out and gave us a heartfelt speech about equality and standing together. Um, he began to list countless races, such as Latino, Asian, expressing how much they matter and how important they are. But never once did he mention a race or identity that reflects me or half the kids that were in the class. Now, members of the board, I know you haven't been to school in a while, and I know most of the people, I know none of you or most of you don't have any kids left in the school district, um, but you must admit how uncomfortable it will be to be characterized just by your skin color on the first day of school and be thought that you were wrong just because of your skin color. To be clear, I don't need you to tell me that I matter, but hearing the condolences given to other races and leaving just one race out it inevitably you'll start to feel like you've done something wrong. And in our principal's attempt to unify us, he instead created unwarranted boundaries and barriers between his students, pitting us against each other based on characteristics that we can't control. The first day of school during the wonder years is hard enough without your principal worshiping at the altar of the race baiters. Donald Trump was having none of it. In September 2020, Trump issued Executive Order 13950 banning critical race theory. The Trump order notes, the Department of Treasury recently held a seminar that promoted the arguments that virtually all white people, regardless of how woke they are, contribute to racism. Training materials from Argonne National Laboratories, a federal entity, stated that racism is interwoven into every fabric of America and described colorblindness and meritocracy as actions of bias. Materials from Sandia National Laboratories, also a federal entity for non-minority males, stated that an emphasis on rationality over emotionality was characteristic of white males and that those present must acknowledge their privilege to each other. The Trump order concludes that all Americans are created equal and that critical race theory in the federal workforce is strictly prohibited. Sadly, but not surprisingly, President Biden repealed the Trump order on his first day, replacing it with a full embrace of critical race theory. Equality as a governing concept was replaced with equity. Equality and equity are not the same thing, as Kamala Harris tells us in this hokey campaign video. So there's a big difference between equality and equity. Equality suggests, oh, everyone should get the same amount. The problem with that not everybody's starting out from the same place. So if we're all getting the same amount, but you started out back there and I started out over here, we could get the same amount, but you're still gonna be that far back behind me. It's about giving people the resources and the support they need so that everyone can be on equal footing and then compete on equal footing. Equitable treatment means we all end up at the same place. If having everyone end up in the same place sounds like an embrace of socialism and a rejection of capitalism, well, that's exactly the point. After all, Kendi tells us that capitalism is essentially racist and racism is essentially capitalist. Kendi also tells us that race-neutral public policy is an illusion. All policy must be either racist 
or anti-racist. If we eliminated the term race neutral from the American vocabulary to, to recognize that all policies are either racist or anti-racist. So everything is racist or anti-racist, and to get into the anti-racist club, you must begin by stepping into the racism confessional. Imagine having to categorize every policy at every level of government as either racist or anti-racist. Senate Resolution 241 commemorates World Press Freedom Day. Is that racist or anti-racist? In South Dakota, it's illegal to fall asleep in a cheese factory. What's the structural racism there? In Tennessee, it's illegal to share your Netflix password. I feel like I could make the argument that that is both racist and anti-racist. It's not just the bills we vote on, it's the results our people achieve. And if there's a disparity between racial groups, it must be because of racist power and policy. Critical race theory says every single disparity in outcomes among racial groups is the result of racism. There can be no other explanation. In America today, the highest educated and the highest earning racial group, Indian Americans. I guess we must all wonder why they've been just so racist to the rest of us. Clearly, this is nonsense. But why bother with objective logic? Critical race theorists tell us to reject the traditional dictates that implore us to write and study as detached observers whose work is purportedly objective, neutral, and balanced. That's from John O'Callamore. Objectivity, balance, neutrality. It's all for suckers, if you ask Team CRT. Instead, critical race theorists embrace the subjectivity of perspective and are avowedly political. In other words, they aren't here to study and review and analyze. They're here to seize power. And you cannot defeat them in an argument because objective facts aren't their value premise. They tell you that. Objectivity, neutrality, that's rejected. All that matters is that they subjectively believe that a racial reorder of society benefits them. One person, one vote democracy, another American value that the critical race theorists would jettison to accomplish their goals. Critical race theorist Lanny Guineer writes, there is a need to talk one man, one vote a little less and a little more of political equity as a functional component of effective representation. They call it race conscious districting. But what they really mean is a race-based quota system in government that will truly be not representative. Critical race theory is an attack on our representative form of government. But that doesn't stop the America Last media from giving CRT a loving embrace and endless defense. By the way, ain't no problem with being woke. Can it influence the way that some teachers teach? Uh, yeah, but that's a good thing, right? Because race and racism is literally the building box of this country. By the way, critical race theory is enormously useful. It's exactly what we need in the military in this country. We need to talk to each other about the problems that we face. We really do. But Republicans, like Matt Gates, they just want to sweep it all under the rug, distract you from rev revving up the old outrage machine. I think Donald Trump was right. That is the dumbest man on television. I am outraged, and I hope America is too. The New York Times recently published an editorial claiming that the reason supporting critical race theory is so important in schools is to ensure that the next generation of Americans can fully appreciate reparations as a policy matter. Redistribution of wealth, primarily on race, seems to always be their end zone. Americans are waking up and fighting back. In Congress, the thought leader on the Republican side is Republican Burgess Owens from Utah. Take a listen. Only those who say there's no progress those who do not want progress. The greatest gift that we had with President Obama, with our American people saying, finally, we can, we can close this chapter. Finally, we can move forward. And what have we done since? That has divided us even more with critical race theory being introduced around the same time. We have a community now that lives the American dream, look around this room and see the middle class that we have developed and more. And yet we tell those who are striving to get where we are that they can't because white people won't let them. That to me is treacherous, is traitors. For to tell others who want the American dream that they can't achieve it because other people with a white skin can't, uh, won't let them do, do that. If you want to repay the black American community, give us back our history. 
It was Karl Marx who said, the first battleground of rewriting of history. And that's exactly what's been happening. You take away our history, you take away pride in our past, appreciation for our present, and the vision for our future. And that's what you're seeing in Chicago, Baltimore, Ferguson. Every place Democrats oversee a black community is misery. And we're going to blame white people? How about an ideology? How about we take ownership? Educate our young people again. Give them jobs, opportunities again. Tell them that the way to get in this country is through free market. Allow them to take away the regulations. Allow them to run their own businesses. Don't burn down their businesses every year because a, a white police shoots a black person. When you have black people, 93% of the thousands of black people being killed are by other black people. Yeah, traitorous. The first line of offense against critical race theory has come from America's parents who don't want to see their children raised to hate each other or themselves. The media tells us that opposition to critical race theory is motivated primarily by opportunist politicians, Matt Gates trying to spark outrage. Is that what this sounds like? My fear is this type of curriculum will actually breed more racism and more divide in our country rather than unity. It saddened me how I have witnessed my own children lose friendships because their friends make assumptions about them. They tell them they are privileged because they're white or they are bad people because their dad is a police officer. So, so many of my kids' closest and best friends who were basically like family to us and welcomed in our own home have now totally disregarded my own children. And I can see why kids are being forced into this noxious blame game. Take a look at some of the CRT instructional materials. This was presented in a school district in Iowa. Make America great again is racist. Denying white privilege is racist. Denying racism apparently in any setting is racist. What the hell is happening to our country? Fortunately, there are real people making the common sense case against critical race theory. When you talk about critical race theory, which is pretty much going to be teaching kids how to hate each other, how to dislike each other, that's pretty much what it's going to that's pretty much, I don't care what it's pretty much what it's going to all come down to. You're going to deliberately teach kids, this white kid right here got it better than you because he's white? You're going to purposely tell a white kid, oh, the black people are all down and suppressed. How do I have two medical degrees if I'm sitting here oppressed? How do I get, first of all, let's sign up, because I only got five minutes now, not five minutes. Two medical degrees, no mom, no dad in the house, worked my way through college, sat there and hustled my butt off to get through college. You're going to tell me somebody that looked like all y'all white folks kept me from doing that? Are you serious? What's sickening about this whole thing is what y'all doing right now is already something I do in my community right now to speak out against stuff because black folks are getting told by other black folks, oh, you know you ain't gonna be able to do nothing out there in the world because them white folks ain't gonna let you get no, oh, you know you're not gonna be able to do it here because you know, white, the, the white man, the white man gonna keep you down. Well, how did I get where I am right now if some white man kept me down? How am I now directing over folks that look just like you guys in this room right now? How? What, what, what kept me down? What oppressed me? I work for myself from off the streets to where I am right now. You gonna sit here and tell me this lie of critical race theory? Of this, this, this is the reason why black folks can't get ahead because of white folks? Are you kidding me? This is what we come to now. I can't believe we even talking about this right now. The last thing we're gonna say right here is something that's crazy. Martin Luther King said he wanted his kids to grow up in a world where they are judged by the contents of their what? Yeah. Their character, not their skin. Absolutely. If they let this stuff go on right now, it is absolutely doing the complete reverse. Like this caring father. Many parents are now millennials. We embrace the color blindness advanced so bravely by Dr. King, not the racial identity division inherent in CRT. Take this heartwarming family as another example. Daddy teaches you you can be anything in this world that you want to be, right? Don't daddy teach you that? Yeah, and it doesn't matter if, if you're black or white or any color. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, yellow. yellow. Right? Black. And, and how we treat people is based on who yeah. they are and not and what color nice. they are. And if they're nice and smart. See? This is, how, this is how children think right here. Critical race theory wants to end that. Not with my children. It's not going to happen. My baby's going to know that no matter what she wants to be in life, all she has to do is work hard and she can become that. Work hard even though you don't know anyone. You can make friends. <laughs> Yeah, you can make friends, no matter what color they are. So we need to stop CRT, period, point blank. Children do not see skin color, man. They love everybody. 
They're good people, they love them. Boomers, millennials, Zoomers. Each generation confronted race as a function of schooling in distinct ways. Many boomers went to segregated schools, my mom did. Race defined where you could learn, the teachers you would have, the courses you could take, the duration of your bus ride, the clubs you could join, even the sports you could play. Society started by defining people based on race. Everything else was secondary. And it was awful, tragic, unconstitutional, deadly, and yeah, racist. Millennials offered better, color blindness. We were taught that race didn't define opportunity. A just society must treat everyone equally. Race cannot be allowed to limit anyone's access to a lunch counter, a school, a golf course, or a Rhode Island Senator's Beach Club, which is less diverse than a Mayflower reunion. Back in 2017, you had expressed concerns about the membership of the all-white Bailey's Beach Club, said that you hoped it would become more diverse. Now your family's been members, your wife is one of the largest shareholders. Should these clubs continue to exist? It's a long tradition in Rhode Island, and there are many of them. Pro tip, if your name is White House, you probably shouldn't be lecturing others on racial equality from your lily white social clubs. Anyone could be anything, we were told. Millennials even elected America's first black president. The Zoomers in school now face a hyper-racialized world, an anti-American set of teachers. The National Education Association has recently passed a resolution to push CRT in every American school. They're going to fight against anti-CRT messages. They're going to study white supremacy. But remember, objective facts don't matter. They already told us that. So they will study white supremacy based solely on their perception of its existence and their reparations as remedies. If you're white, don't deny you're racist. That's what the racists do. Today's critical race theorists tell us we must revert to the days when all decisions, acts, thoughts, and engagements with one another must be analyzed through the lens of race first and race alone. And that is scary because this is precisely what justified Jim Crow and worse. It's no surprise that schools have become the front line of this fight. Parents are reacting en masse like this. People like me and a line of other people out there who will gladly take your seat and figure it out. Hey, guys, this, is a, this is an unlawful arrest. I have a First listen, listen, Amendment listen, listen, listen. right. CRT is racist. It is abusive. It discriminates against one's color. Enough of the toxicity and the division and looking at your skin color and your skin color. They've just been tricked into something uh, that not many black people are into. The Western culture and values that brought forth Christianity in the founding documents are being called evil and racist. My child is not oppressed. And don't assume that. As long as you Marxists push your unconstitutional agenda on my child, she will not be returning back to the outcome schools. Critical race theory is teaching that white people are bad. That's not true. That would teach my daughter that her mother is evil. You already have an educator within your staff that has pulled my daughter aside and said, well, you're a minority, so you know better than to engage in certain things. <gasps> wow. The school is immersed in this leftist ideology. I've noticed a pattern. You treat your bosses, most of us, like children. You treat the woke mob, your employees and teachers unions, like the boss. And you treat children who have not harmed you like pawns in your leftist social experiment. When you give us a timeout for clapping, uh, we hear you saying, look at me, I am the captain now. You're not the captain, we're your bosses, and God willing, we'll return most of you to the private sector very soon. You're teaching children to hate others because of their skin color. And you're forcing them to lie about other kids' gender. I am disgusted by your bigotry. And your depravity. Please get back to just teaching our children math, science, factual history, equity of opportunity, and teaching them how to think and not what to think. Parents aren't just yelling and screaming. They're also organizing and driving change in state legislatures. These states have state-level anti-CRT bills or are considering other changes to the law. Go to gates.house.gov and click the CRT Updates tab to review state-based legislation and connect to people pushing bills where you live. You can also sign up for our email list, which will always have up-to-date alerts on the latest legislative activity. While progress is being made against CRT at the state level, 
nothing good is coming out of the swamp of Washington, D.C., where the Woketopians have a strong foothold and are eager to ingrain their worldview. Critical race theorists want a federal department of anti-racism. Here's how it would work. Recently, in an article published by Politico, Ibram Kendi declared that to fix the original sin of racism, Americans should pass an anti-racist amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Without getting bogged down into Kendi's ignorance of the Reconstruction Amendments, I want to focus on what is sought after in this new amendment. Kendi says the amendment would establish and permanently fund the Department of Anti-Racism, comprised formerly of trained experts on racism and no political appointees. He continues, the Department of Anti-Racism would be responsible for pre-clearing all local, state, and federal public policies to ensure they won't yield racial inequity. They would monitor those policies, investigate private racist policies, investigate policies where racial inequity surfaces, and monitor public officials for expressions of racist ideas. In other words, this amendment seeks to make a few unelected experts the most powerful body in the United States of America. Is the CRT movement already converting all agencies and departments into departments of anti-racism? Take the Pentagon, home of the tough guys. This was once like the last bastion of power in the Beltway, not totally under the spell of the political left. That is until recently. Here's my exchange with Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. How should the Department of Defense think about critical race theory? Could I make a comment, uh, Secretary? I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm very limited on my time, General Milley. Well, I, I just want to make a comment. That the feedback well, I know, but I've, I've, gotten I, I've, I've asked the question to Secretary Austin. I, I don't know what the, what the issue of critical race theory is and what the relevance here uh, in, with the department. We do not teach critical race theory. We don't, we don't embrace uh, critical race theory. And I think, I think that's a spurious uh, uh, conversation. But they are teaching critical race theory in our military. This was moments later in the same hearing. Uh, and it is important that we train and we understand. Uh, and I, I want to understand white rage. And I'm white. And I want to understand it. So what is it that caused thousands of people to assault this building and try to overturn the Constitution of the United States of America? What caused that? I want to find that out. I want to maintain an open mind here, and I do want to analyze it. It's important that we understand that, because our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and guardians, they come from the American people. So it is important that the leaders, now and in the future, do understand it. I've read Mao Zedong. I've read, I've read Karl Marx. I've read Lenin. That doesn't make me a communist. So what is wrong with understanding, having some situational understanding about the country for which we are here to defend? Not surprisingly, the American mainstream media lavished praise on military leaders for embracing critical race theory. That was fascinating, may I yeah. just say. Watching these gentlemen, these um, well-read, intellectually curious... Generals. Generals. Yes. Like, um, you know, Secretary Austin, General Milley, trying to swat away Congressman Matt Gates. And while the chairman of the Joint Chiefs makes an eloquent defense of the truth and stands up for America's military... In battle, Congressman Matt Gates lobs a despicable tweet attacking the general, and I quote here, with generals like this, it's no wonder we fought considerably more wars than we've won. A congressman denigrating our armed forces. General Milley did something very powerful, which is that he cut through the coded speech and language and uh, rhetoric around critical race theory. People like Matt Gates, you know, making fun of and mocking the military, saying this is the reason that we don't win any more wars with generals like this. This is, of course, dangerous, anti-American, and racist. At West Point, lectures are presented by Dr. Carol Anderson on understanding whiteness and white rage. Since I nominate future military officers to West Point as part of my job in Congress, I wanted to know what Dr. Anderson thought about whiteness. She wrote that the Republican Party yearns for a white republic and that the Republican Party platform is white nationalism. This is the nonsense that General Milley is defending. Instead of Dr. Anderson, we should have instructors who can teach the next generation of commanding officers to win on the modern battlefield. Less CRT, more cyber. There's nothing wrong with Americans who are white. There's nothing wrong with Americans who are black or any other color. We must be our brother's keeper. 
loving our neighbors, regardless of their skin color or our own. Only a Benedict Arnold would surrender the Pentagon to the Woketopia without a fight. That's why I'm announcing now that I'm joining with patriotic colleagues on the House Armed Services Committee, and we are introducing legislation within the National Defense Authorization Act to ban critical race theory in our military. We will uphold the values expressed by Dr. King. We shall live together, work together, worship together, and together weave a strong American tapestry. CRT shouldn't be at our military academies. It shouldn't be in our officer training. It shouldn't be in any diversity training. It shouldn't be in our country. Go to gates.house.gov to sign your citizen co-sponsorship of this important legislation. When it's filed in committee, I want every member voting to see your name to know how you feel. Regardless of your race, some might say colorblind to it, we welcome your input and ideas. Because this is the freaking stupidity we are up against. I'm not kumbaya. So I don't like to think Thank that white you. people are evil. I think white people are ignorant. Thanks for tuning in. Make yourself an uncancelable consumer of content. Make sure to subscribe on Rumble, on our Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere you can get our content. We want you to be a part of the discussion we're having and the truth we're telling.